Hello, my name is Bob Andrews. I have the pleasure and honor to serve as the president of the Friends of Gorgeous State Park. Gorgeous State Park is the crown jewel of the park system here in Western North Carolina. Today, I had the opportunity to speak with Sean McElhone. Sean is the superintendent of the Western region of the Division of Parks and Recreation. This division newly reports to the Department of Cultural and Natural Resources in the state. Recently, the voters of North Carolina approved a bond issue entitled NC Connect, which focuses mainly on improving the infrastructure throughout our state. However, part of that bond issue and some of the funds will be directed towards the needed improvements of our natural resources throughout the state. During today's discussion with Sean, we've touched on many of those upcoming projects, as well as the terrific assets that we have in the Western region in our natural resources. I hope you enjoy today's discussion, and thank you for listening. Good afternoon. I'm speaking today with Sean McElhone of the Western North Carolina Parks District. Sean, welcome to Gorgeous State Park. Thank you very much, Bob. I'm glad to be here. Our pleasure. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about the scope of your responsibility in the Western District. Sure, as the West District Superintendent, I help manage all of the state parks and natural areas in Western North Carolina. Currently, the West District basically encompasses every state park mm -hmm. and natural area west of Interstate 77. Okay. So that I-77 is basically the district line that separates the West District from the other three districts in the division. Right now, the West District contains 11 state parks and seven state natural areas. And one of those natural areas, Mount Jefferson State Natural Area, operates a little bit different than most of our other natural areas in that it's staffed and has facilities. So it really, even though it's called a natural area, right. it operates more similarly to a, to a state park. In your district, in the Western District, what are some of the most distinctive features and, and areas that you manage? The, the Western District is the, currently the largest district in, in the division, so it's got a lot of unique features. Um, one of which is, of course, Mount Mitchell State Park, mm -hmm. which is the very first state park in North Carolina, the very first state park in the southeastern United States, um, and obviously holds the distinct, distinction of being the highest peak east of the Mississippi. Right. Um, and in fact, it's actually the highest peak uh, east of the Dakotas and the Rocky Mountains. So, um, it's you know certainly one of one of the most important pieces of, of our division and certainly of the, the West District. Um, the West District is also home to, to the largest state park, which is South Mountain State Park mm -hmm. in Burke County. And due to some some re recent acquisitions at South Mountains, we are very close to to getting to that 20,000 acre oh, wow. threshold at South Mountain. So terrific! It is it, it is by far the largest. And in the West, we've been very fortunate over the last decade in that we've added several new parks and several new units. So the West District is also home to some of the newest state parks. Um, Gorges is now celebrating its 17th year, right. so which is certainly young in terms of state parks. Um, but we've also got even some newer ones such as Chimney Rock and Grandfather Mountain, which are just incredibly unique features and incredibly unique parks and operations that, that we've been fortunate to add to the system. Terrific. The um, Division of Parks and Recreation now falls within a new department within our state. It was determined to, to move the responsibility for the natural areas to the newly named De Department of Cultural and Natural Resources. Tell us a little bit about the rationale behind that move uh, sure. and, and what are its most promising aspects going forward. Yes. So. Historically, parks were located in the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, and uh, what's referred to as Diener. Mm -hmm. And although Diener no longer exists, it has also been reorganized and renamed to the De Department of Environmental Quality. And the old Diener included a lot of regulatory agencies and parks and aquariums, the zoo and the Museum of Natural Sciences were Related to that somewhat, but uh, it, as the, the regulatory needs of the state, uh, as the population grew and the development increased across the state, the regulatory agencies really became the focus of the old deaner. Okay. Um, so the, the idea was, was brought up to move those four agencies, state parks, the aquariums, the zoo, and the Museum of Natural Sciences, 
into what used to be just the Department of Cultural Resources. Right. And that included historic sites, the Museum of Art, the Symphony, uh, the State Library, the State Archives. And it really gave us the opportunity to, to really get into a department that really matched more closely what we were doing on a day-to-day -day basis mm -hmm. in, in parks in particular. So state parks and the state historic sites are very closely aligned. We operate in a very similar fashion. Uh, we are both land dependent agencies that, that are attracting people to a set location to come visit. And the, uh, most of the other agencies in, in the old Dean are just didn't function that way. They had an office and then branched out to construction sites or right. job sites where they were more, like I said, more of a regulatory agency. Um, and even with the Museum of Natural Sciences, by moving into the newly formed Department of Natural and Cultural Resources, all of the state museums are now under one agency. Um, it just gives us an opportunity to, to, to really more closely align what we're doing with other agencies that are very similar. Well, it sounds like that you're also able to learn best practices uh, as well. So things that work for the museums to attract tourists and the public at large. Um, sounds like you want to learn what they've done well and apply it to the natural resources. A a absolutely. There's a lot of things that, that we do really, really well in state parks, but that doesn't mean that we don't have room for improvement and room to grow. And there are a lot of things that the folks at Cultural Resources do very well themselves, and they've got a lot of experience operating these attractions. And we really hope that, that just like you said, Bob, we can learn from them. They can learn some best practices from us. Absolutely. And it will also give us an opportunity to share resources, whether that's equipment or uh, uh, just staffing, um, and you know, really kind of share those resources among similar sites and some locations that are nearby one another and really become more of an, an efficient department overall. Great. Well, it sounds like a good move. Uh, one of the more exciting aspects of uh, that's happening within our state is last March, uh, the public and the voters of North Carolina passed what was called NC Connect. Um, which is a large bond financing um, uh, effort to focus on the infrastructure in the state. And I know some of that money is earmarked for projects in the parks. Tell me a little bit about what are the most exciting ones uh, in the Western District. Sure, we were, we were very, very fortunate to be included in the bond referendum. Uh, what was approved by the voters in early March included $75 million for development and land acquisition in state parks. And like I said, we were fortunate to be included in the proposal, but even more fortunate that, that the voters passed the bond. And you know, we think that really reflects the, the standing that state parks and all the other agencies have in, uh, with, with the, the citizens of North Carolina mm -hmm. that they would approve a, a bond referendum. Um, of that, that $75 million, two of the, of the projects that I'm most excited about in the West District, one is right here at Gorges, mm -hmm. which will be a, a new campground, which the park desperately needs. It's one of the biggest demands that we get from park visitors and will really serve a need for the park and for the greater region and, and the, the area around Gorges. Uh, so that, that's one that I'm certainly most excited about. And the other will be a visitor center at Lake James State Park. Oh, great. As Gorges has, has benefited so much from the visitor center here, these, these visitor centers are really, really serve a, a, a great uh, need for the park staff, but, also, but more importantly for the park visitors. Mm -hmm. Gives them a central location where they can come and congregate during educational programs, special events, have a point of contact to come and ask questions. And uh, really every park needs to have something similar to that in, in their, their operations that they can benefit from as well. So in, in the West District, the two that, that really stand out to me are the campground at Gorges and the, the visitor center at Lake James. Well, focusing on those two for a moment, what are, uh, what are the plans in terms of timing and rollout of these and maybe some of the others? Sure, so we're, we're hopeful that we'll receive the first uh, segment of, of the bond money in August of this year at which point we will go into the design process for the, those projects that were selected during this, this first tier, and which will include Gorges and Great. Lake James. Um, those first parks will also include a parking lot expansion at Crowder's Mountain and a parking lot expansion and trail development at Chimney Rock. Oh, much needed. So the, the larger plan is to develop or, or spend that money over a five-year period. 
So this coming August, we'll be starting the design process on the, those projects that were selected first. And then the following year, we'll move into the construction process. And that second year, as we move into the, the construction portion of the first projects, right. we'll also start the design process on the, the second, second tier projects. So Perfect. It, it's going to be a lot of work. Uh, certainly, it's going to be a lot to keep up with. But again, it's a, 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 such, a, such a benefit to all of our parks and the division as a whole to have that $75 million. Absolutely. Um, some of the talking about those projects in specific, as well as other things that you're facing, what are some of the biggest challenges facing the division over the next 18 to 24 months? Sure, well, our, our, our attendance at all of our state parks uh, division-wide has, has gone up almost every single year. For the past seven years, we have either set a new record or tied the previous record for attendance. Mm -hmm. So state parks are very well loved. They are very well visited. Um, so that, that is definitely one of the challenges that we're faced with is trying to keep up with the expectations of what our visitors have, of what the state park is to them and what it means to them. One of the biggest things that, that is certainly most helpful to, to almost all of our parks is to have an active support group such as the Friends of Gorges. Uh, but also to have an active volunteer program at each park. There are a lot of things as the attendance increases in our parks that our park staff just aren't able to keep up with. And that might be things like trail maintenance or offering educational programs in the parks or just even serving some of the basic needs in our campgrounds. And that's, a, that's definitely a place where friends and supporters of parks and volunteers can come and help, whether that be through a camp host program in the campground where mm -hmm. We have volunteers come in and stay in the campgrounds and provide some basic services to our, our visitors, such as registration and selling firewood. Um, and we, a lot of parks, we have volunteer educators that come in on the weekends when the demand on our park staff is at its highest right. and come in and, and offer educational programs. So um, one of the biggest ways a public can, can help is, is just by supporting their local park. You know, contacting that local park superintendent, reaching out to them and, and asking how they can help, what specific tasks or specific needs do they have that, uh, that, that people can help out with that, and it goes a long way. Great. Well, I know the current, the superintendent here now, Steve Pagano, would, would really be mad at me if I didn't ask you about what, uh, we're sitting obviously in a beautiful part of the park right outside the visitor center. Um, he, he would be, he would hold me accountable if I didn't ask you what some of your favorite uh, portions of this park are. Sure, um, you know, Gorges really stands out to me, as I'm sure it does to a lot of people, just for the amount of, of, of waterfalls and the number of waterfalls that it has in the park. And it seems like every time that I come to visit Steve and, and to visit Gorges, you know, they're, they've got pictures of the waterfalls on the wall and you know, one will stand out to me as, you know, I've never, for some reason, I've never seen this picture. And certainly there are a lot of waterfalls that I haven't yet seen in person too. Mm -hmm. um, but that is certainly one of one of the things that, that stands out to me most about Gorges. Gorges is, is very unique in that it's in the, the Blue Ridge Escarpment. There are a lot of plant species that, that occur here that don't occur in most of the, most of the rest of the state and right. certainly not in uh, most of the rest of the state parks that we've got. So biologically, it, it's a very rich location um, and because of that amount of water, not only in waterfalls, but the amount of rainfall that the park receives, um, it's got a lot of very unique resources that we just don't have anywhere else. Right. So those are some of the things that, that stand out to me most about Gorges. Um, as an avid hiker, personally, I always enjoy coming to Gorges just for the many, many miles of trails that we've got in the park. Um, and especially having that connection with the Foothills Trail, which serves as a greater regional trail that folks can come out and spend many, many nights on and, and in a lot of instances not see another hiker, not see a paved road and really get out and get that wilderness experience. Right. Well, Sean, thank you very much for your time today. I know you have a busy uh, program here at Gorges today and I appreciate you taking out some of that time to meet with us. It's, it's my pleasure. I support the, uh, I'm very thankful for all the support that you provide, Steve, and to Gorges and for all the friends of Gorges State Park do. Well, thank you.